Hey all, and welcome back for some new HFC Patreon TV comms. Today we're going to be covering episodes 4 and 5 of Cooking Master Boy, and uh, I've been instructed to tell you all a couple of things just before we actually get into the episodes themselves. Uh, number one, we're covering episodes 4 and 5 because the patron who commissioned these, uh, Jeffrey Patton, or Shadow Reaper, said that uh, 6 to 8 are like their own arc, so we'll be covering those next time, just... So you have, like, you know, information as to why we're already doing two this time. And the second one is, we're actually going to a different dub and sub now, because uh, Jeffrey uh, was not aware that we were using the Japanese version before, and uh, that's completely our bad. I wasn't to know. I am an idiot, after all. So uh, we're going to be using the Chinese dub, and I believe it's the Cantonese sub. I'm not entirely sure. I'll try to make sure to put the details in a pinned comment on the YouTube video, but uh, I'm sure there's people who will sync things up correctly anyway, so don't you worry about that. Are you ready for episode four of Cooking Master Boy Vogue? I think I am, yes. All right, guys, you know how these things work. We'll count you down to the first episode, and uh, when I tell you to uh, hit play, or you could just check the syncing instructions, you know, to save me from waffling on here, then you, you know, hit the turn, you do the thing with the doodad, and then they're all synced up, and then when we tell you to close episode four, uh, go ahead and do that, load up episode five, and then we'll count you down to that once we finish waffling about episode four. All right, here we go. Episode four of Cooking Master Boy in three, two... One. Oh yeah, seizure alert, by the way. I knew there was a third thing I was forgetting. The fact that there is an opening. Yeah, well, let's make that a fourth thing that I forgot. Oh, there you go, Mao, running on the fields, looking like fucking Ash Ketchum. You will be the Pokemon cooking master boy. No, we're going by the whole thing that he's actually Tyson from Beyblade, and what he's carrying on his back is actually what they do the whole thing in. <laughs> It's like, I carry my own Beyblade Arena, that's how hardcore I am. He took off his eye patch, and Mao was there. Like, how much do you have to hate someone to allow them to live inside your head rent-free like that? That's just the whole thing about anger. You hate the person, and yet it consumes you so much, they're effectively a part of your life you can't live without. Pretty much, yeah. So what do you remember from the last episodes we watched, mate? Because I do have a little bit of a summary here if you need it. Uh, if I recall correctly, they went to the Canton region, or rather Mal went to the Canton region after winging cook-off against titular eyepatch villain. Uh-huh. And he was tasked with trying to create food to impress the master enough to take him under his wing in the Canton region. Of course, he utterly failed at first because he neglected the fact that the water in the Canton region is different. It has a dirt odour to it. So, episode 3 was him trying to find out how to remove that dirt odour and own the respect of the master. There you go. And the old drunkard actually was the master of the restaurant. So there you go. Oh god, it's going to be weird getting used to a new dub. Oh no. I suppose it does make sense, though, just from like where they are. It's a bit like Helsing. I cannot listen to the Japanese dub of Helsing. I'm sorry, it just does not make any sense considering the whole thing takes place primarily in England and then it has the whole Nazi Germany thing going on in the forefront. Okay. Like, the best example is when Father Anderson is trying to do English. If anybody does not love our Lord, Jesus Christ, it must do better the poor, amen. Okay. It just doesn't work. All right, let's see. We are in the Yang Spring Restaurant now, and uh, I have a feeling, Mao, things aren't going to go smoothly for him here. Yeah, you rub that radish, Mao. You're not ready for being a super cooking master boy just yet. Well, I mean, this sounds like a very good institution, so, you know, they're going to put him through the ringer. Really? You, how, of course. How petty do you have to be to trip someone up? Petty enough to be a lookalike to Gary Oak, I would bet. Here he is. There's that fucker. He was fine with leading Mao to the restaurant last time, but now that Mao shows promise, he's a little bit of a bitch boy. Yep, I'm not entirely sure if this character's gonna have a turnaround or not. He may just be the hateful bastard, and then the uh, leading chick is going to be the one to kind of play as the opposite to that. Yeah, this is Sanche, who is uh, also a young chef at the restaurant. He is uh, jealous of Mao's talent and will try to spoil Mao's cooking. That's as much as the episode summary as I'm going to tell you. Is it, how petty are we talking here? Are we talking about literally deliberately dirting up the ingredients? Are we talking like when he's not looking, he sprinkles a little bit too much cayenne pepper into the broth? 
Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll be like the type to let a bunch of rats in to try and trick the master into thinking Mal's pulling a ratatouille when in fact it's just a health code violation. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, that was a very stupid analogy or comparison. I know, I know, it throws you off sometimes. Ah, uh, it's fine. I've lived with you long enough and you've lived with me long enough at this point. <laughs> no, no, we do not live together. We live separately in different counties. This is true, and that's probably the only reason why we tolerate each other. <laughs> Listen here, you shit. I didn't put on these shadows for nothing. You stay the fuck out of my way. It's like the fuck you say to me, you little bitch. I have you know I graduated top of my cooking class. <laughs> Ah, I see. The girl makes him back down. He really is Gary Oak. I have no dad! Have we met his father yet? I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember. Mayor Lee's father is the, uh, the master of the restaurant, by the way. Why is he like this? That's a good summation of the entire episode thus far. <laughs> Angry lad, why are you like this? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, just ignore him, work hard, and in the end, Sanche will just be fucking himself over, you know? Exactly. In times of adversity, you just gotta power through. There you go. Just pass out, and get ready to do it all again the next day, because cooking's fucking hard, guys. Hell yeah, especially if you actually own your own restaurant. Like, holy hell. We don't, by the way, so I'm just talking out my arse here. But you, you've got to have determination and grit to be able to make it as, like, a, a short order cook and whatnot. Oh, someone is working through the night. While Mal sleeps, other people practice their tossing. Not like that! Huh. That looks like Sancho. But is it? Or is it merely a doppelganger? We shall see. The moon shall reveal the truth. It is! The moon hit his eye like a big pizza pie, and it revealed that it is indeed a more... No, wait, Sanche. <laughs> but the moon hits your eye like a big cooking master boy. That's a Sanche. Don't let him see you there. Oh, he's cleaning it. That is uh, not a cleaning technique I have known of. Mal's about to realise he's entered into a completely different school of cooking. So have you ever tried to flip food in a pan before like that? No. If you knew how clumsy I was, or am even, that would be suicide. I've done it before, and thankfully it hasn't resulted in a massive spillage yet. Although then again, I'm a little more scared when it comes to that sort of thing, so it's more like a mini flip rather than like one big one that just turns the whole thing over. Ah, I see. Isn't mini flip like a series of like miniature skateboards that you flip with your fingers? No, no, no. You're thinking of mini clip, which is a uh, internet website that has mini games and flash animations and what have you. Ah, I see. Ah, you see what I did there? Yeah, I see, <laughs> I see. Oh, you cheeky little minx. With the pokey tongue. What do you think you are? In some kind of Japanese anime? No, we're in a Chinese anime right now. Ah. Apparently she didn't get the memo then. Wow, that is just straight up promotion there. Did you hire them to say that? Oh, poor people, come eat at the Yang Spring restaurant. You can actually afford it. They have been implanted. <laughs> Sorry, did I miss something there? Was it good? Was it bad? Hmm. I don't think they're going to tell us right away. Something tells me they're going to like have someone break through the door. It's just like, you! You did the thing again. You defiled my cooking. Were the green peppers not prepared correctly? Oh no, that's the exact same face the customers made. Were they, cu like, cut incorrectly? Because there was a little thing about knives back there, and Sanjay didn't want Mao using them. Maybe so, although there's something to do with the spirit of the food. 
I mean, they look the same size, so I don't think it's the cutting technique. Maybe they were overdone? Huh. Because if it's a pepper, then obviously it'll go soft if you uh, cook it for too long. Maybe it's just the composition. Tenderness and crispiness together for the first time. Oh, it's floppy. I don't want a floppy pepper. How could that be? It's the cooking time. Ah. Uh. Oh, wait, he may have worked it out. I thought I was just going to spell it something ridiculous like, you suck. <laughs> Sign Sanche. <laughs> yeah, it is to do with the cutting and whatnot. If they were all the same size, they'd all cook at the same time. Exactly. So in theory, we're both right, but you are more technically correct. Ah, the best kind of correct. Hell yeah. Oh, it was him! Well, because I lent you my goddamn knives! It doesn't matter if you like doing them like that. You work for a famous restaurant now. Get over yourself. Exactly. It's not about what you want. It's about what the paying customers expect. This is what happens when you work for the public. Huh, the rule of exchange, eh? Oh no. So now that Mao's called, maybe Sanche has to leave? Fire one of the other level fours. Oh, did he deliberately flunk it then? Oh, I mean, if he was gonna leave anyway, there was no point in doing well. I don't know, I don't think it's that simple. I reckon he just doesn't want to work with him. Hmm. But he has the passion. You saw him at midnight tossing and turning that rice. I mean, like I said, it must be just because he doesn't like Mal that much. So he's just... He would rather fail than have to work with him. Like, maybe he's just that petty about the whole thing. Just a slight correction from earlier, by the way. Maylee's father is the dude with the green hair, not the actual master of the restaurant. It's a little bit confusing. The Emperor Penguin-looking bloke. <laughs> I hate you all. Uh, fuck your plate. Uh. That was my best plate! <laughs> wow, that was all very dramatic. Aw, oh, cute. Look, they're not actually juggling. Look, their hands aren't touching anything. Come on, who do you <laughs> think you're fooling? It's fine, Volk. It's fine. Calm down. Always... I'm getting angry, Tom. I'm getting really angry. He always gets like this when there's animation inconsistencies. Don't ever watch Steven Universe, mate. Oh, hold me <laughs> back. <laughs> Yeah, Mao, you're weird with your ideals. I mean, it does have a point. It's kind of like with Midori and Bakugo. You have to wonder, wait, why do you put up with that crap? Just ignore him. Yeah, I mean, you've got so many other friends. Exactly. You have, like, pretty much the whole of Class 1A at this point. Why are you worrying so much a guy who clearly does not like you? Okay, so this is my room now. Just as messy as I thought it would be. Well, he doesn't sleep, as we realized. <laughs> yep, he's just continuing his craft. Has he not been honing his blade? Or has he been honing it too much? No, I think he's saying because the knife is used that much, he must be passionate about cooking, yeah. and he was putting on a front the whole time. I'm stealing your wok. <laughs> I've never had a wok this clean, you don't understand. Ah, uh, comfy Chinese docks. A fine aesthetic. He's just holding up a boombox. <laughs> no, you can't do this! Bro, I love you! I brought your knife, I guess. This is an act of war, I'm just trying to give you a knife, Berg. Look, this is your favourite walk! This means something, apparently! Oh, what? Play Desposito. Man, the subtitles are moving so fast! Yeah, 
why is he resisting? Is it to do with his father? He did seem like a sore spot. Maybe he's one of incendiary characters we've been hearing so much about. It's not because I'd like you or anything, I just wanted to make sure you succeeded. Please, bro, I need a rival. It can't be a proper anime without one. Well, we don't understand how you feel right now because you're being incredibly vague about it. Whee! In the drink. Ah, male bonding. <laughs> Females doing the washing. It's just like it's ancient China or something. <laughs> well, I guess you'll have to stay with us there. But what about the Yang Spring restaurant? There's still the one in, one out rule. Uh, maybe they'll make an exception if they can prove themselves both to be equally adept. I mean, I know there's a whole thing about having too many cooks, but surely one more if they're skilled enough wouldn't hurt. Yeah. It's not like he wouldn't be contributing or anything. Okay, so he grew up in a restaurant much like Mal. They're kind of the same, really, then. Hmm. It reminds me of a little bit about that rival dude from Food Wars, in a way. How he came from, like, a posh Italian restaurant and then, uh... I can't remember his fucking name now, God damn it! It's but the fine. main character was sort of like in one of those little run-down restaurants in Japan in the alley and what have you. It's probably- it's, it's, it's reminding me of kind of the same dynamic, but the situations are a little bit different as far as how they uh, gel with each other. One was born from rivalry, this one seems to be a little bit more complex than that. You're missing an ingredient! Oh no! I'm not gonna eat tomorrow! Soylent Green. You little shit. How could you not know that I put pepper in there? You forgot the salt. <laughs> Correct. You may now have seconds. <laughs> you may have dessert and sleep in your own bed. Oh, I see. It's a thing that his father almost certainly beat into him. It suddenly got very serious, Volk. I don't like this. No! I don't like abuse! I never asked to be the son of a cook, Dad! Little did he know that he doesn't actually do this shit himself either, he's just getting him to do it just because he thinks it'll be beneficial to surpass. I guess so, yeah. What's this? It's a turnip. <laughs> oh, radish. Yeah, it's radishes over there. It must match the moon completely, but father, the moon has different rotations. Shut up! You should be able to wear them as very focal shades. <laughs> <laughs> they become very focal because as they start to age, it goes black. <laughs> Look, father, just because you have no eyes doesn't mean the rest of us can stare in an eclipse, okay? <laughs> That's a good point, actually. I lost my eyes in a great cooking battle. You don't understand. Oh no, is the reason he can't sleep is because he has, like, PTSD? That would be really dark if that's the case. Fuck, man. Or maybe it's just so ingrained that he does it in spite of it. <sighs> no, no, he just wants you to be better. But it comes across that way because it's literally abusive behaviour. I don't think it's quite abusive on the level that, um, well, I can go back to Bucky again on this one because Yojiro, who is Bucky's dad, is a lot like this too. Oh no! Jesus, I'm glad I tabbed out just so I missed that. Don't worry, there wasn't anything huge shown. If this was done by four kids, I don't know how they would have edited that one. You must not think while chopping. But father, that led me to the situation in the first place. Oh, did the mum take it? 
She did. Oh. Jesus fucking Christ. This anime has suddenly taken a very dark turn. I don't think this will be a concert, it's just that it's going by the whole background of, yeah, I can't stand my dad, he's an abusive asshole, so I'm gonna leave home and find my own cooking. Mm -hmm. He went to Canton, and then he came to the Yang Spring restaurant, and he finally found a home. But why did he want to leave so badly? This just raises even more questions, yeah. And then I will beat him with a stick. Ah, how do you like it more? What? What? Hurt me more, Daddy. Wait, you're my dad. <laughs> Shut up, kid. <laughs> oh, saying about the bone as well, that must have been a pretty deep cut. I mean, it was... It wasn't quite like a full-blown meat cleaver, but it was getting very close to that point from what I was seeing. Do you think that like, him and Mao will work together from now on so Mao can do things he can't and Sanjay will cover what Mao lacks? Who knows? Or maybe they'll just learn off each other in order to become better. Because obviously he wants to be the best to uh, one-up his dad and Mao just wants to be the best. Like no one ever was, I guess. Yeah. So there's no excuse for be tripping him up, though. Yeah, but at least we're getting to this quickly, actually, very quickly. Oh yeah, that that is insanely quicker than I was expecting, to be honest. So, but what are you gonna do, Sancho? We can't lose you in like episode four, mate. Yeah, come on, you get you're meant to be a titular character. Who's gonna be our Brock? I swear by my ancient Chinese boxer shorts that we will cook this dish correctly. So long as this string holds my underpants up, we will not fail. There you go. I'm a fucking clairvoyant, Volk. Well, it has to happen at some point. <laughs> I think, yeah, I just suppose it's the whole thing where if you watch enough anime, you'll kind of get a hang of how some of these stories ultimately end up. But yeah, usually I'm the one that ends up making those predictions, so well done. Let's prove Yang Spring wrong, and make him get rid of their shitty take a penny and leave a penny type thing, okay? We can do it together. <laughs> if we succeed, we might be able to afford to buy our underwear at Primark. Do we know much about Mars' father? Not so much his father, I don't think. Yes, the fire of determination is in both their hearts. I really like the music in this show. It's getting me hive. We didn't ask for you. This is a bro moment. Okay, fine. I'll stand there and do the washing up, I guess. No, this is just to secure the trio. It's fine. She's allowed in this one. Okay. I mean, their bro bonding moment was over that campfire earlier. Now, we did get the ED last time. I'm not entirely sure if there's, like, a stinger or anything. Well, let's watch it through, and uh, we can sum up our thoughts, I guess, in the process. So, uh, what were your thoughts on this episode, Tom? Obviously, there was a lot more than we were expecting, and it was a lot heavier. So, uh, what's your opinion? Hmm, I'm not entirely sure, but I appear to have lost audio on my thing. So, uh, I'm just going to skip ahead. Is there a stinger? No. Windows Media Player encountered a problem. Well, fuck you then, I guess. <laughs> well, I guess that's one way to end the uh, fourth episode. <laughs> I liked that episode a lot, and it actually subverted my expectations in a way that was satisfying. Like, I didn't realise Sanjay was going to turn around in the space of an episode. I didn't realise the backstory would be that poignant, to the point where he'd actually leave his parents' home and travel to the Yang Spring restaurant and so on. Yeah, I mean, honestly, with those sort of things, usually people worry about the other person, obviously, on the other end of the wrath of the... I guess, other parental figure. So I'm surprised he just went up and left like that, although I suppose maybe that's what his mother would have wanted for him, question mark? But yeah, that was a lot heavier than I was expecting, but 
even more surprising was that is, as you mentioned, just the ridiculously quick turnaround. It seemed like that sort of thing would go across over the course of a few episodes. There would be like an episode of huge adversity, then there would be the whole backstory part, and then there'd be like another part focusing on the reconciliation and the turnaround then. But we seem to have gotten this all in one package with this episode. So it made for a really, really fun episode. It's just it took me aback a little bit by just how fast it was going, but not in a bad way. I didn't feel like it was overpacing itself. It's just more of a surprise that it was paced the way that it was. Mm -hmm. Alrighty then, I have episode 5 up right now. You ready to see how they do? Can they get Sanche back into the Yang Spring restaurant, Rook? I reckon they will. I reckon that's going to play into possibly the arc that will be coming up the next time we do these audio comms, so... I reckon I already know what the result will be, but as you mentioned many a time before, both publicly and in private, it's the context that counts. Indeed. All right, here we go. Episode 5 of Cooking Master Boy in 3, 2, 1. Apologies once again for the seizure vision. I didn't make the show. If I did, it would probably not be as seizure-y. So, in this episode in particular, if I get some time, I actually did a little bit of research on some other popular cooking anime that uh, I've been digging through. Um, it was actually more of a question of, was Cooking Master Boy the first cooking anime that came up? And uh, turns out, I actually found two that actually predates it. Wow. And I'll go through them. The first cooking anime that I could find, at the very least. I mean, obviously, this is based on my research, so how accurate it is may be up for debate, but if somebody knows anything earlier than this, feel free to uh, put it in the comments. But uh, Mr. Ajiko was one of the first cooking animes to have come up, and it was released in full in 1987. Huh. And uh, the synopsis goes a bit like this. Yoichi... Aji Yoshi helps his mother prepare delicious meals in a restaurant and catches the eye of a famous food critic in Japan. He is invited into a competition for the title of Best Chef, considered one of the classics in cooking anime thanks to the skillfully made dishes and showcase of professional cooking skills. So, I get the feeling that kind of what Food Wars went into a lot as well, and then they take it to the further extreme by adding like all of the uh, imagery and what have you that they do. And there's actually one more that was released in 1992 called Cooking Papa, which is based on one of the longest running manga series in Japan, all about a big manly dude built like a fridge. That was actually my own personal description there. This wasn't taken from the wiki or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, the guy is huge. And uh, he's a great employee and a genius cook, but he never takes credit and always lets people assume that it's his wife who can't cook very well, who is make oh no, it's his wife who can't cook very well, who is making all the delicious meals. So uh, they go with a slightly different dynamic by having an obviously very talented cook and having someone else take all the credit. So uh, okay. I didn't actually get the chance to watch any episodes of that, I was mostly just taking down a couple of... Uh, episodes or anime that predates cooking Monster Boy as far as the food theme goes. Ah. Uh -huh. And there's obviously a couple of other really popular ones as well. Obviously, uh, Food Wars is one of them, but another that you may or may not have heard of is uh, Toriko, which was released in spring 2011. And it's a show about food and fighting rolled into one package. Toriko is a food investigator or hunter who sets out on a journey to find the most unique and unknown ingredients around the world. Accompanied by his partner, who is a skilled chef, Toriko is often hired by restaurants to find the rarest ingredients, and he ends up fighting fearsome monsters to use in the dishes he creates as well to achieve his dream of a lifetime full course menu. I think I have heard of this, yeah. Ah, uh, this might be the one that uh, tips you off then. Um, Toriko has actually appeared in a collaboration project with both Goku from the Dragon Ball series and Luffy from One Piece as part of a special animation collaboration to celebrate the start of the Toriko anime. Oh, does he like have a big red costume? Yes. He also has red, red costume, long blue hair. Yep, that's the one. Ah, I thought you might know that one, just from that visual alone, because a lot of people may only know of Toriko just from that collaboration, which I suppose is the idea. So here we go, here's the rub. We'll make this green pepper and meat dish, I will be the left hand, he will be the right. Or whichever one was not Sanjay's, like, her hand. You gotta hear his backstory. Roll the last episode again! <laughs> 
We didn't have video <laughs> back then. I'm sorry, please. I love cooking. I practice all night, every day. Cooking's my gangster life, homie. You can't... Where am I going with this? Slap me, Volk, please. <laughs> it's alright, you've just been spending most of your life living in a chef's paradise. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. I'm not unhappy about the rules, I just have a hurt hand. That is rough. Not even giving an ear. Yeah, an inch it's even. like, no, that's the rule. Theme of hurt feelings. Although maybe it's a bit like with the test from a couple of episodes ago, and it's just, maybe they're expecting him to, like, power through in spite of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he seems a little bit of a prick, honestly, even if he is a master chef. <sighs> Did we not have a bro moment last time in our undies? Come on. We can power through hurt feelings, we can power through stubbornness, and we'll make our own store. Fuck the Yang Spring. Oh, they're gonna provide some competition, I like this. <laughs> it's gonna be like a fucking mafia that, like, drives by and throws tomatoes at them. <laughs> This is going to backfire horrifically. Yes, and Jay is not entirely convinced, but he's not exactly against the idea either. Oh, it's chibi time. <laughs> wow. This is going to be, um... Well, first of all, they need a business license. Even in these times, I'm pretty sure that was a thing. Then they're going to need, like, a, scr a crew, at least. Even a skeleton crew. Because, like, who's going to take orders? Will it be Melee? We know these two will do the cooking and whatnot. And uh, you get the feeling it may be Melee, potentially. Or maybe they'll just find someone on the street and say, Hey, you want to make a quick couple of <laughs> a quick couple of pounds? There you go. <laughs> Encroaching on the signature dish. <laughs> That's how you stick it to the man right there. I'll show you Moon and Son, you fucks! There you go. You gotta make sure they're crunchy. Use my good hand. It's like biting into a skittle. You have the crunchy outer shell and then the soft inner sweet. Yes, but you gotta make sure it's chewy, because if it's soft, fuck that noise. Literal machine gun noises for all the uh, cutting. A lot like bacon for a second, but I know better. <laughs> And now we cut to Sanchez, and it's just like, he, he cut the shapes of the alphabet for some reason. <laughs> Look, you, you can let me do the cutting if you want. <laughs> He's getting into this, I like it. I think I like this dynamic more than the rival thing, honestly. Oh yeah, he's getting into the zone. Let him do the stir-fry and let Mao handle the cooking. You've got a match made in heaven there. You know, it may just be the turnaround of his character, but he looks a lot more friendly now. Maybe, yeah. Just in terms of his look. I'm not sure whether it's the smiling or what, but it's just something about him after that whole thing. Like, even though his character look hasn't changed, it's just something about him that just bleeds goodness and wholesomeness into your soul, Dude, I guess. Dude, they're so bro right now. This is the best anime of the year. Well, the best anime of 1997. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. If this works, the Yang Spring will finally have competition. Hell yeah! Because there you go, with all the ingredients the same length, they're all cooked at the same time. Mm-hmm, as long as they are put in at the right time. Ah, uh, my own cooking. I wonder if he'll notice something. Yeah, that's not bad. I bet it's going to be great. Oh no. Did we forget to kiss the ingredients? Give them love? Oh my god, <laughs> the meal has a weakness. Oh, I see. It doesn't stand out on its own. It will just be like a replica otherwise. 
Exactly. If it's just a mirror image, it ain't gonna cut the mustard. That's it. Mustard. Throw it in there. I have to say the job's grown on me already. Thankfully, it doesn't take that long for me to acclimatise. Well, we've only watched a few episodes, so it shouldn't take us that long at all, since we weren't, like, hugely invested into it. It's not like ten episodes in and we've had to change. Yeah, for sure. Being able to make a quick adjustment like that works nicely. Maybe it was a bad idea to make this restaurant so close to Yang Spring. They're probably spying on us right now. Maybe they're counting on it. Huh. Like, even if they fail, they can see where their hard work and determination has gotten them to. Still, this is a test, and we must do this properly. Fuck you, son! I will cook better than you! Is there no other way to prepare this dish? It's like I'm getting real sick of this shit! <laughs> Maybe we could use the stuff in the trees? Apple? Or peaches? Is she gonna move into the country and eat a lot of peaches? We cook, Mei Li. No, no! <laughs> the final ingredient was sorting green all the time. Oh look, a new restaurant! Hell yeah, bro! Let's get crunk and do some fucking takeout. Does your father know about this? Please, please don't tell him. I'm trying to go independent. Ah, uh, they were very critical of the last time, so... Hmm. Well then again, if it turns out alright, they're gonna be the ones to sing it from the hilltops. And even if they don't, they just have black eyes. They're not properly coloured in characters and whatnot. Let's do this shit. Bro powers activate! <laughs> I fucking love the machine gun sounds. Hell yeah, reuse animation. But we don't care, it's still hype as shit. So when's this other ingredient gonna come in then? Or was it already included? We'll see. Maybe it was infused into the sauce? Alright, moment of truth. Well, they haven't made that weird face yet, so it's a good sign so far. Ah! <laughs> Why must you tease me with your levitation tricks? Oh, this fine, it's halfway through the episode, you know we're gonna get an answer. But what we really want to know is what Master Chozu will think. That's the good shock. Jesus! It's Shenron! <laughs> we did it! Bro moment! Hey, get out of the way! <laughs> and then, like, the local newspaper says, Signs of radiation emanating from the restaurant could be seen as far as five miles away. No, those are the lasers they use in the Gundam. It's just these guys cooking up that meal. It's just like, quick, fire the thing! <laughs> wow, this is going down a tree. Well, at least if they're only selling one dish, it's easy enough to prepare. Yeah, for sure. They can just do it in bulk. Everyone is loving this shit. Everyone's getting into this shit, even Chun Li. It's like, dude, I gotta bring this back to Guile. <laughs> the Street Fighters will love this shit. <laughs> it's just like they're interrupting a fight, like round two. It's just like, hey, you gotta check out this green bean and green pepper and meat thing that I just found. Oh no, they poach their customers. I'll kill them. Meanwhile, here, <laughs> and then he's like, ah, fuck you, Dad. Make way for him! Whoa! -oh. oh, he's gonna try it. Give me your finest and only dish. <laughs> no, this is way good they ask for a boiled egg. Huh, impress me then. 
can you pay? Like, <laughs> it's like, do you have money? I ain't giving you a handout, dude. You might be my dad, but I gotta make money here. Oh, this is the hyper shit. <laughs> it's the most powerful one episode bonding we have ever seen. Oh my god, he's going ham! <laughs> he's going ham on that beef. <laughs> I've never seen someone so fired up about stir fry before. Hey, stir fry's the good shit. You have no idea. I don't. I'm a very picky eater. Ah, uh, you need to try a good stir fry at some point. Sorry about that. We had to wait for Shenron to uh, disperse. <laughs> I wish for this to be the most delicious thing ever consumed by mortal men. Your wish has been granted. Can someone stop playing that Casio keyboard, please? I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> the music seems... I don't know, it's fitting in some ways, but just completely unfitting in others. It's like the sort of music you expect to hear from, like, a crime detective show or something in this era. Whoa! What have you done, you little rascals? <gasps> Massacre! Well, he ain't the master for nothing. He's probably quick on the uptake. Ah, oh, yes, there's a basket there, too. With my powers of deduction, I conclude. <laughs> they used basket weave? <laughs> oh, pomegranate seeds. Oh, okay. Pomegranates in general. I wouldn't have expected pomegranates for how they spilled over May Lee earlier, because pomegranates don't typically spill. They just sort of crack open and the seeds are kind of all over the place. They don't really have much juice in them, so to speak, unless you blend the actual fruit inside. Okay. I, again, I like how we actually get like a walkthrough of how to cook the dish. Thank you, Chibi Mao. I have learned something new today. Alright, I'll invite you back to work in the restaurant. Well, I'm sorry, but we've got all your customers now, so we don't really need you. <laughs> Can you just imagine? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we don't need you anymore. But, but we don't have room for him, literally. You'll have to live in a shack outside. Oh, is this the master? Is he getting in on this shit as well? <laughs> you were here oh, he's time. been dining the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you tell him. He might be a drunkard, but he knows how to fucking cook. One might argue that drunkenness is a good way to get good at cooking, if you ask James May. He could be drinking wine all the time and still beat Gordon Ramsay in a cook-off. Hmm. Three to two, in fact. What is the tradition, actually? Say it together. Untraditional. Okay. They change every day. Sometimes the green pepper and meat thing will be regular. Sometimes it will have pomegranates. Sometimes it will have mystery meat. Sometimes it will have red peppers. Ooh. Mix it up a bit. I like it. It all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. Yes! But what about Mal? Good point. Hmm. Yes, we like food! <laughs> I guess Mao was just there anyway. Yeah. That was a good resolution. Yeah, I really like this episode. I'm the last one. 
Hmm. So I'm guessing the next few minutes is probably going to set up for this apparent arc that will be happening. So uh, we might get a little taste of what's to come, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, she's the hype man of the trio. <laughs> yep. She is the tasty Steve of the group. <laughs> Meanwhile, in darkness... Oh, is he going to continue his uh, rice pan cleaning method -y thing? We'll see. If it even is a cleaning method, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Oh. Ah, he's still doing the radish watchamajigga. Please don't cut your other hand. So this is his way of fighting the... The whole thing, I guess. Yeah. Hey! Fuck you, Dad! I win! <laughs> Got his mojo back. Ah, uh, What a character arc. In two episodes, that was. No, he made his bed and fucked off. But where is he going? Oh my god, has he gone back home to challenge his father to a cook-off? Ooh, that would be interesting. That could be what the arc is entailing, perhaps. This time I'm actually on the boat, so you can't push me off the dock <laughs> this time. No, but I can push you off the fucking boat! Oh, he's like the rival who needs to stay a rival instead of a friend, otherwise he'll become dull. Ah, oh, of course, that old chestnut. Yeah, he needs that strictness. <sniffs> That's frustrating. You son of a bitch, we were just about making cooking together! We were friends, dude! You don't leave a bro behind! You can't run anymore, there's only so much docks! Once I make Super Chef, I'm coming for you, bitch, so you better be ready! The bros of a generation, mate. And yet it ended so quickly. But, I suppose he has his reasons, and we'll wish him the best, of course. So it looks like the arc isn't going to involve the trio then, it's probably just going to involve Mao and Mei Li. Maybe they'll throw in other characters, but it looks like we're not even going to get a taste unless we stick around for the teaser, and we know we don't do that shit around here. Oh no, close that video. Alright, Volk, that was episodes 4 and 5 of Cooking Master Boy. What do you think? Very solid episodes, I gotta say. Like, woo! I wasn't- I didn't know what to expect, and honestly I wasn't expecting much, because- it seemed like for a while that Cooking Master Boy was going to be one of those, like, easy-watching, feel-good kind of cooking shows, rather than one filled with, like, action like Toriko and just sheer imagery and what have you with the Food Wars has. But 4 and 5 very quickly turned me around on that one. They threw in a lot of hard-hitting story with this one, and they had a good little arc there with the whole uh, green pepper and beef that they had going on as well. Very solid. I... I can't really find much to fault there, to be honest. Yeah, that was a really strong couple of episodes, I think, and uh, I'm glad we uh, pushed ourselves to get back into it, because we have tried to record this set once already, and there was a bit of kerfuffle, but uh, now that we're here with like a strong mind and whatnot, I really appreciate those episodes, and I'm looking forward to covering, uh, what was it, um, six to eight for the arc next time? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so, uh, yeah, join us, I guess, sometime in the future for episode 6 to 8 of Cooking Master Boy. Uh, once again, pledge for by Jeff of Patton slash Shadow Reaper. And remember, guys, if you want your own TV comms, check out Patreon. Every penny helps support the group by paying co-coms for their time, helping us to, you know, purchase games and equipment and so on. And you get TV comms up to an hour, in fact, in return for such a pledge. So we'll see you next time for more of this. Bye for now. Ciao for now.